Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of the Today's Focus podcast series. It is Friday, October the 21st, 2022. It is currently 9.37 p.m. Central Time. Well, I hope everyone has given our focus your focus. I really have. I have tried uh, for the last two days for the Today's Focus podcast series to get you to focus in on Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, and to get you to really look at some specific things. I gave you some questions to answer, and, and we kind of stumbled upon a problem. Uh, we stumbled upon a, a, a problem with a Greek word that had me completely baffled, and I came across something very interesting, that depending on what you're looking at, you get completely different Greek words. You get you get like, no, this is the Greek word. And no, something else is saying, no, this is the Greek word. I'm like, I don't know which Greek word it is, but I know this. One of them basically is meaningless and the other one makes perfect sense. Why it's it's I I didn't have all of my Greek tools. I was hoping to to spark some conversation about it, but no one was too interested in trying to figure that out. But um, I, I hope, I truly, truly hope that this podcast series is, I'm, I'm trying to accomplish something that each day I'm giving you, well, a focus for that day, today's focus. Here's what I want you to focus on for that specific day, because we get distracted by so many things. We have so much available to us. So if I can give you one thing to focus on of a spiritual nature that you can set your mind on that, hopefully by the end of each day. You've, you've gained some insight into something spiritual and you've, you've, you've witnessed some kind of spiritual benefit. You've experienced some kind of spiritual benefit. At least that is the goal. Now, the, the, uh, this podcast series is still new. Um, we're still, we're still fleshing out some things. The intro, I'm still trying to get used to that. Uh, there's some, some logistical things there because I have to control the volume. I have to control everything there. And I'm not used to necessarily doing that. And, uh, you know, there, there's just, there's going to be, you know, some just learning how to do it and doing it the best we can. Uh, considering, you know, typically when I turn on the microphone, we have a spoken intro and I just say, welcome everyone and give you the date. And I don't have to mess with any volumes or anything like that. But that's, that's irrelevant. Um, the goal is, to get you something to focus on, to give you something to focus, to get you to focus. And I, at least for me, Colossians 2.8 has really, 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 really just been on my mind. Not even because I'm trying to like, well, hey, if I'm going to put it out there, I've got to focus on it. it. It just really has stuck with me and got me thinking. So you're ready to do a little bit of work. The goal is to keep these episodes at the 15 minute mark. So I'm going to force myself to really just deal with the Greek word issue. I want to I want to talk about the whole verse, but maybe maybe we'll just keep talking about uh, Colossians two eight for the today's focus podcast series for a little while. Maybe I'm going to keep talking about it until either people tell me, look, if you say if you do one more episode about it, I'm never going to listen to you again, or maybe until all of a sudden people are like, wow, this is actually really good. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know which is going to come first. But are you ready? Okay, here we go. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. We read these words. Beware. Now, we, we, we haven't really spent a lot of time on the word beware. There's a warning here. Be on the lookout. Be vigilant. Be sober. Beware. Because you, there is a danger. There is something you should be concerned about. As a believer in Christ, you have to beware of something, all right? Now, what do we are to beware of? Are you being vigilant? Are you paying attention? Are you looking around? Are you, do you know what, what, what the danger is? Now, specifically, this is telling the believers at Colossae for them to beware. So first and foremost, we need to consider what were they being warned about? What did they have to be on the lookout for? Well, it, it's true for us, but it's true for them as well. Here we go. Or I should say, it was true for them, and it's true for us as well. Now, beware, lest any man. All right, so we got we to gotta beware, lest any man, any person, like any anyone, if they do what? We got to be, so we're looking out for individuals, for people, doing what? Lest any man, and here's the word, spoil 
you. Spoil you. All right? Now, if you look at other translations, like I have one right here, you'll see like a language that's something like this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, you'll read, Be careful that no one takes you captive. Spoil, take you captive. Now, when we hear the word spoil, we maybe think like, you know, some kind of food that is spoiled, some kind of fruit or something, or, or, or the milk is spoiled. Like, like it's kind of been corrupted. It's gone bad. But I, I, I don't think it's, it, the, the word spoil is really going with that idea so much. And I think you're, we're going we're gonna to kind of catch on here in a minute. The other translation is the idea, like to capture you or to, or to catch you. But we got to be on the lookout for this. But when we started doing just a little bit of work on the word spoil, we came to kind of a weird, I thought it was a weird discovery. At least I thought so. If we open up the Blue Letter Bible app, the Blue Letter Bible app, which is what we use at our church, and I try to have everyone having it on their mobile devices so they can look up the Greek words or the Hebrew words and, and look at all the places where that Greek word is used. We can't wait. It was really bizarre because I thought, I thought, okay, I'm getting ready to make a, a this is going to be some like, we're going we're gonna to discover something very powerful. And we, we discovered this. Here's Colossians chapter two, verse eight. I'm going to the interlinear. All right. Spoil is this Greek word, according to the Blue Letter Bible app, according to the Blue Letter Bible app. Strong's G 2071, SMI. 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 Thayer's lexicon. I me. I me. So SMI. SMI. Now, as soon as I'm like, SMI, oh, wait a minute. Like, as soon as SMI, wait, wait, no, 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 wait. Because I, I, I thought that I knew the word and, and, I, and I had read in commentary after commentary a completely different Greek word, right? And, and, and uh, all the Greek, all the commentaries say, well, the Greek word means this or the Greek word means this. And it's like this powerful word picture, this really, really powerful idea of what it means to be spoiled or to be caught or to be captured here. It's really, oh, and I'm like, but all of a sudden, like, yes, oh my. And then look, here's, it's used 188 times. Here's how it's translated. J just see how, like, literally this means nothing. Shall be, will be, shall have, shall come to pass, shall, Strong's definition Will be, shall, shall come to pass, may have, fall, that would follow, live long, sojourn. Like that, what does it even mean? Like that has nothing to do with spoil. Beware, lest any man spoil you. It has nothing. The outline of biblical usage, I will be. Future, first person singular of to be. I will be. What? What? I will be spoiled, right? What, I like what? What? Is, what? Is, I don't understand. So I was like, "S O my, what? What is that?" So I kept looking up at commentary after commentary after commentary, and they're like, "No, it means this, and it means this." And I'm like, "Wow, those are great word pictures," but I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Now, again, one of the things I love to do is to teach in a way like, okay, hand it to everyone else. But in this particular case, I was literally perplexed. I'm like, "That is not what I heard the Greek word is there for Colossians two eight. So this evening. I'm like, you know what? Forget the blue letter Bible. I kept looking at it, refreshing it, going, there's, there's got to be a mistake here. There's got, I still think there's a mistake. There's a mistake here. That, that cannot be, like the interlinear is messed up here. It's just, it's got to be. It's got to be. It has to be. I, I'm convinced that it is. But I, so I was like, okay, forget the blue letter Bible app. So I went to studylight.org, studylight.org, I refreshed the page and I went to the Old and New Testament Greek Lexical Dictionary. Now, immediately I know something's up. It's giving me a completely different Strong's number, a completely different Strong's number. And the Greek word is this. And this is the one that when I looked it up live on the air, I thought this is what we're going to find. But we didn't. This is what I thought we should have found. Shulagogeo. Shulagogeo. One more time. Sulag Ugeo. Sulag Ugeo. Sulag Ugeo. Sulag Ugeo. Now, what does that mean according to Thayer's? To carry off. 
to carry one off as captive, to lead away from the truth and subject to one's sway. So it's to carry off. It's like a military commander coming in and capturing you, capturing and taking away everything, quote unquote, using kind of the old uh, phrase to carry off the booty. In other words, all the things it captures the the area and it gets to take everything away, gets to carry it away. So what Colossians 2 is saying, hey, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. Don't let any man carry you away. Don't let any man lead you away from the truth. Don't let anyone, in a sense, capture your mind, capture your thinking, capture your perspective, and move you away to something that is false, something that is incorrect, something that is empty and meaningless. Now, we have to be on the lookout for that. But let me make it very clear. This is not just, sometimes as Christians, we think we're immune to this, but we are not. False ideas, wrong ways of thinking creep into the church. Pastors stand behind the pulpit and give out conspiratorial ideas, fraudulent information, things that are not true, and Christians buy into it and then repeat it. And I'm not even talking doctrinally. I'm talking maybe something about going on in the culture, something happening, just crazy, basically urban legends and not even realize what they are doing or saying things that are absolutely false. So we cannot be carried away. We cannot be captured. We cannot be spoiled. We can't have our, our thinking, in a sense, hijacked, right? So go back to Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2. Verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you, capture you, lead you away. And how are they going to do it? Through philosophy. Through philosophy. This, this is the idea that, that uh, uh, philosophy is like the pursuit of wisdom or the pursuit of something. In other words, they're giving, giving you a philosophical idea, a concept, a way of thinking, a way of understanding, a way and, and, and you can't allow that philosophy to capture you and lead you away. Now, some people take this to mean all philosophy is bad. I should never study philosophy. No, it means, look, even if you never walk into a philosophy class, never, if you never even read a philosophy textbook, you are bombarded with philosophy 24 hours a day, seven days a week in music in movies, television, uh, people, you know, social media, they're, 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 it's their concepts of wisdom. And th- you're getting these different perspectives and Christians, most cases are ignorant of these philosophical concepts yet adopt them and not even realize it. Start thinking, in other words, being, in a sense, you start uh, looking at the world from a political perspective instead of a biblical perspective, all the different things that can happen. Now, the way that King James writes this, Colossians 2.8, uh, Colossians 2, 8, or the way it translates this, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. It's almost like, here's philosophy, here's vain deceit. Almost like separately, but but I I ask this question: How are they connected? And I think there's a connection here, right? There's a connection between the two, right? The vain deceit means empty deception, so it's a philosophy that is empty and deceitful, right? It's it's it, it's it, it's either it's the philosophy that leads to a empty deceptive way of thinking or the philosophy itself is empty and full of deception. But in either way, you've got to be, you got to take every thought captive. You got to take every, every idea captive and consider it. And so many times within Christianity, I think what we have a tendency to do is just try to tell everyone to stay away from the bad ideas, but we don't tell people how to actually take the thought captive, analyze it and see the flaw in it. It's the idea of being captured and taken. And, 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 and you should read all of the translations. Now, we're almost already at 15 minutes. But let me just try to, I really want you to do this. I still want you to try to identify what was the vain philosophy? What was the vain, deceitful philosophy? What was the philosophy that, that kind of led to a vain deceit? What was this that had entered the church at Colossae? Now, it's really hard to identify. We don't know. But I wanted you to at least look up and try to, 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 to discover it. And then I wanted you to try to identify some 
philosophy, some vain deceit that has captured your way of thinking at different times in your Christian life. These, these ideas that, that was vain, empty, and deceitful. I, I wanted you to really try to contemplate that. I wanted you to, I wanted you to try to identify it. I wanted you to, to see exactly I wanted you to to really think about the ways you have been captured by it. Those were at least two things I wanted you to do. And I wanted you to consider that. And I wanted you to, to answer that. I also wanted you to kind of see the, the connection between philosophy and vain deceit. How, how do you understand that? Um, how, do, how do you see that? Um, yeah, and there, well, there's so many more. There's other other things I could give you. I, I could go back, but I'm already now at 16 minutes. But I wanted to at least clarify that this evening, that the Greek word there for spoil, I think it's better to understand that the Greek word is this. Sulag ugeo. Sulag ugeo. Sulag ugeo. That's the Greek word, to be captured, to be led away. And there's thinking and ideas out there that grabs your mind and leads you away from the mind of Christ to a mind, to a way of thinking that is vain and deceitful, all right? As another translation says, be careful that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit. Is it full? You see, again, philosophy and empty deceit, are they, how they link together? Or, like, are they separate? And you'll notice some of them will, al- will almost just say empty and deceitful philosophy, empty and deceitful. Other translations basically put the empty and deceit to describe the philosophy, not separating it. Is it the philosophy that leads to empty to empty deceit or is the philosophy itself empty and deceitful? Just, just some things to think about how we should look at it. But I, I just want you to really consider how your mind has been taken captive sometimes by empty, deceitful philosophy. And it doesn't have to be a philosophy that comes from a classroom, like a a college class. There's empty, vain philosophies floating around your church, my church, your mind, and my mind. But I really want us to give this some thought today and this weekend. And I'm just going to read the whole verse. Beware lest any man spoil you, capture you, lead you away through philosophy an empty deceit, vain deceit, meaningless deceit, right? To mislead you. And this va- this philosophy and vain deceit is after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. It's all contrary to Christ. What does it mean rudiments of the world? Oh, there's so much to take apart in Colossians 2.8. Make that your focus the rest of this evening and all this weekend. Right? The, the goal is to really give you one, one thing, one thing to think about, one thing to meditate on, one thing, one thing. That's what I want you to work on. All right. You can email me, newsif at yahoo.com. News. I, 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 wanna, I don't want to stop, but right now at almost 19 minutes. Remember, these are supposed to be 15 minutes long. Oh. Mm, there's, I just, there's so much in this verse. I don't, I don't know. There's one of those times where I guess maybe the verse is speaking to me maybe more than others, but there's a lot here to really meditate on. But email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. The goal here wasn't to cover everything, but to, again, just to hand it to you to meditate on. And I, and I want to hear from you, newsif at yahoo.com. Again, those in Discord, love to get your thoughts on all of this. Newsif at yahoo.com. Thanks for listening. Everyone have a great, great evening, a great weekend, and spend some time focusing on Colossians 2.8, focusing on the things of God so that you can grow and so that you can not be distracted by all the things calling your name and telling you to look over here, set your affections on things above. And this weekend, let's focus on Colossians 2.8. Thanks. God bless.